finding joy in your every day. Shout outs to our favorite essential workers and free streaming. Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Well, hello there and welcome to a Thursday it's April 23rd, 2020, day 221 of Gotta Get on Allen and day 11 of hashtag hopefulest challenge. Are you taking the challenge? How are you feeling? 30 days to feeling better. Keep with it. Keep up with it. Do your homework. Do the questions. Challenge yourself and become a hopefulist just like me. I read a whole book yesterday. That's right, a whole book from start to finish. It was not a very productive day for me. Now, Tucker had had me up in the middle of the night. I had very little sleep, and I was grouchy. Grouchy. So I let myself have the day off. I did have a, a call that I had to make, a little bit of work, and obviously I did the, uh, the podcast in the morning. Uh, but other than that, I kind of lounged around, read my book, I watched some television, and uh, it was a lovely little day off. You know, you just got to do this every once in a while, and it's not like I didn't get anything done. I got the podcast done. I always do the podcast, right? Uh, I did have a call. That was important. I did check in with somebody that I'm coaching right now, so I got some stuff done. I didn't get any of the um, what I call needle movers done. Excuse me. Um, in the courses and all that I'm taking, we, we always concentrate and focus on the needle movers. Do the needle movers because there's a big difference between uh, being busy throughout your day and being productive throughout your day. So I try to focus on the needle movers, which I did not really get to any yesterday. But, you know, like I said, I was sleepy. I was probably not at my optimum energy and think mode. Uh, I was definitely grouchy. So I just took the day off. And that's what's great about working for yourself. You can do that. (laughs) I know I'm very lucky in that respect. I do love it. But I don't take the day off very often, I have to tell you. But I did watch some television. They had the finale of Little Fires Everywhere. If you read the book, uh, there is some... There's some big differences between the book and the series. And one of the differences is I don't remember hating Elena as much in the book. I I was not a fan of hers in the book either, but I understood her better, I feel like, in the book. I, I understood her motives a little bit better, where in the show, I think she is just character. Uh, characterized as a terrible person. But, you know, whatever. It uh, it doesn't matter if you, um, you know, the books are always different. Always different from the series, the movie, what have you. So um, keep that in mind if you're watching. Now, that show on Hulu, also on Hulu, Mrs. America. I'm enjoying that very much. That just started. It came out with three episodes, and now they are releasing a new episode every Wednesday. So I'm on episode four, because that's all there is that is available right now. And it stars Rose Byrne, Kate Blanchett, and it's about the ERA movement. Very interesting stuff. Uh, Rose Byrne plays Gloria Steinem who, of course, was the um, forefront of the women's movement back in the 70s, started Ms. Magazine. And, uh, you know, it's nice to see um, the personal side of this a little bit. So if you have a chance, check it out. We are getting Hulu, by the way, for free. Now, I had actually 
purchased a subscription to Hulu back in January because they had a sale one day, $1.99 a month for the first year. I think it's typically five ninety nine a month. I'm not really sure. So I took advantage of that. But then Joe, my husband, had received a text message from our cell carrier one day. We have Sprint letting us know that we get Hulu included in our package with Sprint. So uh, we just did some minor uh, modifications, and now Sprint is picking up that bill. So we are getting Hulu for free. So if you have Sprint, check that out. Now, there are all kinds of streaming services right now that are being offered for free. I think I told you about HBO offering some shows for free. And I know that some of them were like The Sopranos, I think maybe Veep. Um, And they have now added Big Little Lies, which is very good. So check into that. I think you might need the HBO Go app, uh, which should be free. So uh, if you have some time and you're looking for something to watch, check out Big Little Lies. There are two seasons, and I enjoyed that very, very much. What else was I going to tell you? There was something else I was just going to tell you, but I don't remember. It went right out of my head. So as I finished my book last night, I was starting to get a little frantic, thinking, will I have something to read? What will I read now? I have read all of my library books. I have read all of the free books I have gotten recently that I have um, been interested in reading. And lo and behold, I get a notification from the library that one of the books I've been waiting on has now come in. So thank goodness. Whew. But I was going through my Kindle library last night as I was just kind of trying to see what was available. I am pretty sure there are a number of library books that I have borrowed that are still in my Kindle library. Now, if you have a Kindle and you use the library app like I do, you know that once the book is expired, they send you a letter letting you know that the book is expired. And then, and depending on the app that you use, like if I go through it on my iPad, my Kindle app on my iPad, it looks like all of those books are available to me, even though they're no longer there, which I find to be very annoying. But it's a little more straightforward in my Kindle. And all you have to do is delete that letter and then it'll remove it from your library. I found a bunch of books in my Kindle app last night that I know were library books. I know they were. I know I didn't purchase these books, but yet they're still in my my library. Odd, right? I don't I don't know how that happens. And you know, I'll probably won't go back and read them. I don't go back and read many books. Occasionally I do, not very often. So I'll probably, you know, count on one book and then I'll go back and then it'll have mysteriously disappeared. So I don't know. I just was wondering from you guys, uh, if you use the Kindle and the library app, has that ever happened to you? I mean, it's not just like one or two. Like I found at least five books that I am positive were library books that are still in my library. And, you know, I clicked on them to make sure that the book's actually there and the book is actually there. So just some, just something I thought was a, a little bit interesting. I was supposed to host a driveway happy hour yesterday with some of the girls in my book club. And uh, it turned out to be a very windy, chilly day. So we all decided to forego the driveway happy hour for this time. It's something I've been thinking about doing for a while. You know, my neighbors and I, when it's warm out, we'll do that. Like, we'll each sit in each other's driveway and uh, just hang out and talk. It's nice. It just it feels so foreign at this point to actually talk to real people in real life and look at their face as you're actually doing it. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get something like that in soon because I feel like it is definitely needed right now. Just a little social interaction while social distancing at the same time. Today's topic, I want you to shout out to your favorite essential worker. Let's show our appreciation and tag them In the post, Mandy says, my sister Nancy, who is working at the ICU at Capitol Health Hopewell Campus, 
and there are many others that I know since I work in a hospital myself. Sandra says our daughter-in-law, Janessa, uh, working a hot spot in New Jersey. Hey, that's where I am. Beverly says uh, a whole list of people, her security buds at um, at SOS, which is the uh, the hospital around here. Linda says Joe, which is her husband. Uh, Marcy called out Rebecca. Thank you for all that you do. Anne says my sister works in a grocery store exposed to about a thousand people a day. She says on Sundays I deliver to the post office or for the post office that is by the day. Uh, by day I do billing for essential workers, so uh, it's for a hospital system. And Kimberly says my oldest son who's still running our restaurant. Yes, lots of um, essential workers and people on the front lines. Thank you for all that you do. We truly appreciate it. You are our new heroes. You really were always our heroes. We just didn't notice it or pay attention to it or realize it, however you want to word it. But thank you, thank you, thank you. I am considering a run to the grocery store today. I really don't want to do it. I'm scared. I don't like the grocery store. I don't like the grocery store during a normal time, let alone pandemic time. I don't know. I feel like I feel like it's the least I can do to help my husband out since he's still working every day. But then again, he's already being exposed. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I really don't want to go. I don't know if he can tell. Really don't want to go. Today's blog post is about finding joy in your every single day. And that means finding joy in the process. What process? Well, any process. How often do you start something and crap out right away? Has there been a time when you go full force into a project only to lose interest a few days or a few weeks later? Yeah, me too. Been there, done that. In fact, it's what I've done all the time. Another reason why my mind didn't believe me when I said, I'm really going to do it this time. I'd proven myself wrong every other time. But not this time, sis. This time we're going to make it stick. How do you ask? Well, joy. That's how. We are going to find the joy, and that will keep us going. As we continue to focus on commitment and consistency, the best way to keep at both is to find joy in the process. The main reason I've been able to keep up with my podcast for the past year is because I love doing it. I took what I loved about radio and combined it with my daily message of inspiration and positivity. Talk a little bit about myself and some cool, fun stories that I share with you. At least I hope they're cool, fun stories for you. I find an interesting topic most days that you can chime in on and be part of the show. These are the things I loved doing every day on the radio. I still get to do a little of that on the podcast every day. Then I go into my main message. My main message of the day, one I hope inspires you and shows you how you can think differently, more positively every single day. I found a process that I love, one that I want to keep doing for many years to come. And in spite of all of the pitfalls I faced, all of the times that I thought this would never work and I would never be able to make money at it, I kept doing it because there are a handful of you who have been there from the beginning And I know you look forward to it every day. And as I keep saying, I know who you are, and I will always love you the most. And honestly, this helps structure my day as well. People think I'm crazy when they find out I work from home and still get up at 4 a.m. every day. (laughs) I have gotten up at that time for over 25 years. I am used to it. I don't only not mind it, I enjoy it. I like getting up before the rest of the world and starting my day. I like to relax a little, enjoy a cup of coffee before I have to rush to start my day. Since I had always worked so early, it was like a race to get out the door in the morning so I could get every minute of sleep possible. I don't have to do that anymore. I can relax and do whatever I want first thing. And that is what I do. That is what I do. I like to have my podcast done and ready for you by 7 every day, so I still need to be productive early. But after the podcast is done, I get to focus on all the other stuff, that stuff that will eventually turn this into a profitable business. And I'm getting there, aside from yesterday when I did nothing but watch TV and read books and nap. Meanwhile, I love being there for you, 